Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lisa Murray, and I am the, the chair of the North End Clinic for the fourth division of the NMRA. And uh, welcome to this month's clinic. Um, we are going to have Greg Price present uh, a presentation on building foam core mock-up buildings um, for your layout. Hope you enjoy it. So um, my presentation today is on form, foam core building mock-ups. And uh, I have used this technique uh, for many, many years and it's really proven successful in a lot of different ways. And I'll explain that as we go along. So it's a technique I've used for uh, several years. Um, this is just one example, Bartlett Barrel, and we'll discuss this more later. This is what I was referring to. A lot of times you see these cardboard placeholders, if you will, that just are labeled industrial crate and packaging or whatever they happen to be for the distinct purpose of operating and uh, actually holding a spot. Now, that's great for operations, but it doesn't allow you a visible look at what it's going to be like once it's built. Buildings are not cheap anymore, uh, especially if you're going to create something unique. You don't want to make the wrong cut because it won't fit where you want it to go. The materials I've used for these things that you'll see is foam core sheets, thin plywood, again, heavy cardstock. A great photo col color photocopier is essential. Goo or rubber cement, straight edges, squares, box knives, all the typical things you would think. Spray adhesive, um, strip styrene or balsa, fine sandpaper, and then various detail parts, and I'll discuss that later too. Acrylic paints, uh, black or dark gray construction paper. The preparation for this whole thing is to identify the location and shape of the size of the building you want. Now, once that takes place, you, de you decide on the building you wanna use there. I have chosen for this a building put out by Magnuson Models years and years ago, but it's one I have. And so the, you start by photocopying the walls and use uh, the color setting on the best color you can get and then um, use black or gray construction paper behind the windows when you do the photocopying, otherwise it'll show white. And then to use a straight edge and obviously your number 11 blade and cut out the walls from the copier paper. The Magnuson kit did not come with window mullions in each of the windows. So for those, I printed out this um, sheet of black stripes with a small orange stripe that matched the color of the building and I put those behind the windows so that they gave each of the windows window mullions for the photocopying. The construction starts as you use spray adhesive to glue the photocopies to the foam core. Don't be stingy with the, with the spray adhesive because the walls will eventually peel away if you don't use enough. Um, once everything dried for a while, then you can cut out the individual walls. Now, determine the size of each wall for the building you're trying to represent. Um, I'll show you what this ended up looking like, but what I wanted to do is make something other than a rectangle. And so um, I, I was able to do that without making any mistakes in cutting the walls of the actual building kit. Cut the walls out at full size, and then you can make the changes to those as you go forward. Just remember that you're going to lap one corner of each side, and I'll show you that here. I cut back the edge of the foam core on one wall of each corner to make a lap joint. And you take it all the way back to the paper. And what that does is instead of having one side being a white quarter inch gap, I would say, or side, you end up with a nice seam that you can actually touch up with an appropriate color of paint or permanent marker. And this actually works really well because you don't get that big gap of white. You can do whatever you want with the roofs. You can turn the building upside down and trace the dimensions of the roof. Pick your roof treatment. I've used black paint, glue on a, glue on a piece of fine grit sandpaper and paint it black. You can use tissue paper for rolled roofing. Commercial roofing materials are a great way. Uh, paper Creek Models was a great one for different types of roofing. You can use balsa wood or styrene strip to hold the roofs at chosen heights and then paint the top edges of the foam. Right here, this hasn't been painted yet, but you can paint this edge along the top gray to match the color of the, the actual walls. You can also use masking tape for rolled roofing. This is an example of a building I've 
put together for a backdrop. It's just basically masking tape on the styrene roof top and painted black and weathered. And it, it actually has a really nice look to it. You can also use, again, this commercial roofing material. This is roofing material that I bought uh, ages ago. I think it's Clover Creek models. It's a pre-weathered paper metal roofing material. I added that to this uh, foam core mock-up of the Michelson Mining Group. And if you recognize this, this is a, a, a Campbell Kits Red Mountain Mine. This actually sat on my layout for about 12 years before I actually built the uh, kit because it was a nice placeholder for the actual building to come. Details, again, use as much or as little as you want. Loading docks and roofs, because the walls of the foam core mock-ups are the exact dimensions of the finished building, you can actually use loading docks and roofs on your mock-up that you can eventually use on the actual model. And then of course, styrene roofs for tube vents and chimney castings, et cetera. And don't forget signs. Now the signs are really important because even if they're temporary, it's a must for your operations. And you can see a couple of examples. Here's Bartlett Barrel. Um, this is just a building flat that was uh, done with uh, a radical flats building a flat that you'll see later. And then this is uh, also a foam core mock-up with a scratch built loading dock and roof. Other options for this kind of material or this kind of technique, there's Radical Flats, a company called Radical Flats. I do believe they're out of business, but you can find these things on eBay from time to time. Clever Models is another one, along with Model Railroad Forum and Trackside Scenery has a lot of different things. And I'll show you some examples. This is a Radical Flats building flat. This is another couple of Radical Flats businesses or buildings that you can use. Um, there's a, there was a whole series of these, not only in HO scale, but in N scale as well. And at N scale buildings in HO make a great force perspective too. Clever Models has a series of paper model buildings that you can use. Um, this is a great looking building. You can see they've got tabs on the, the outside for building an actual 3D building, but you can also do it yourself with foam core. This is a, a couple of other clever model buildings. This is a Princeton Brewing Company that's an actual 3D building, but you can also just cut these pieces out, glue them to your foam core, and make them a, a building flat as well. Model Railroad Forum has several not actual photo buildings, but they're pretty darn good representations done for background bracket ground models with a little weathering, maybe even a little mist of, of white spray paint, they might fade into the background and provide a really great background building for, for your layout. Here's another couple uh, of these. I've used this top one on my layout. It's very difficult to see. It's a building flat. It actually turned out really well. Trackside scenery. These are a couple of examples of trackside scenery. They're more photo building backdrops than, I don't want to say cartoon, but animated or whatever you want to call it. These have a great look to them and they're nice and long and uh, can fit both N scale and HO scale as well. More trackside scenery buildings. Again, you can cut and paste, you can cut pieces off, you can do whatever you want to because it's your opportunity to get creative with these things. Again, you can download and print yourself some of these things um, and sometimes they're even free. Scale scenes, clever models, backdrop junction, and model art are just a couple of the ones that uh, you can use and uh, get some good models from. The bottom line is, how does this all look on the layout? And again, I, I said before, I've used this for many, many years, and I'd like to show you some examples. One of the benefits to this whole scenario was that when I was designing these two buildings, which is, you'll see a little bit later, this is Pyramid Brewing on the right, and then Dixon Fruit and Produce on the left, they were actually two stories each higher when I put them together. And then I realized with such height to these buildings, I would lose sight of this city to be built on a hill behind them because they were so tall. So I actually reduced the height by two stories each and they actually worked out really well. Again, this is Michelson Mining. The way it had sat for 12 years, I realized 
that this little extension that was on the kit itself wasn't going to work real well because it was in the way of the darn coal cars. So that wasn't good. And I didn't have a chute in order to load the coal into the coal cars. So when I built this, I made some distinct changes. And uh, although it looked good from a distance, when I actually built it, it actually turned out really darn good. So what I ended up doing is I flipped it end for end so that the thinner end was on the left and the thicker end was on the right. And then I was able to put a loading chute out from the building itself over the track to load the coal. And this is again, this is just the Campbell Red Mountain Mine Kit. There's nothing on the back. There's no back to it at all. It's just been expanded out. And then there's, there's lighting inside in the office here with a desk and chair and people. And there's also a light up in the, uh, the tower as well. There's also a light under the loading ramp too. So there's a lot of opportunity for deciding what you want to do, look at it, make some changes if you want to, and then go with the, uh, the actual building. So again, the proven concept uh, that they were way too tall as originally built. The nice thing is I didn't have to cut down the original kits. I, I was able to cut down the building mock-ups in order to make the significant changes that had to happen in order for this to work out in the long run. This is what Pyramid looked like after cutting it down by two stories on the front building and two stories on the back. And then Dixon was two stories higher as well. They ended up looking pretty darn good after they were built. So this is Diamond Brewery as it was built um, using design preservation model kits. It has an interior in the loading dock with uh, all sorts of kegs which would be really nice right now, but um, good, you know the signage and people doing roof repairs and things like that, just all the little details you can. But that was a, a, a nice result of having done the foam core mock-up first. This is what the end of the Dixon fruit and produce looked like. I actually cut it not as a rectangle, but I actually indented one wall and put a loading dock and roof over it. It was actually moved from Cloverdale, which was kind of a middle of the middle of the layout dense destination into Matheson where it receives fruit from Eastern Washington out of Spokane and Yakima and Wenatchee. This has been there also a very long time. This is Long Bell Lub Lumber Company's cabinet manufacturing plant. It's a Magnuson Models uh, Cyclops manufacturing. I, I needed to find out if it looked decent enough. Cloverdale was kind of modeled after the town of Kalama down in Southwest Washington. I, I worked at the cabinet plant for Long Bell during high school and college. My dad worked there when he was in high school and college and my grandfather just happened to be the plant superintendent. So it was obvious I had to have this on the layout, but it's actually given me a pretty good perspective it might be a little tall because it, I don't really see much behind it, but behind it's gonna be a, a, a growing hill up to the right uh, with woods and rocks and et cetera. So it may not be too bad at all, but it's definitely a big shipper of uh, cabinets and a receiver of wood and et cetera, hardware. This is Wisher Washer. This is the final product of the original photocopies that you saw be at the beginning of the, the presentation. I not only made it by level, I also made it triangular shape to fit into this location. What I did learn is that I'm going to have to swap when I build the real thing, this front wall with the back wall because the back wall has the loading doors on it for a freight. So that'll be a simple move. I just reverse the cuts and we go from there. But it was a nice opportunity to make some signs, to use some um, detail work on the roof, and uh, gave me an opportunity to see just what kind of cuts I would have to make in the actual kit in order to make this thing happen. Uh, and this is a look at it in Port Farley, it is my waterfront port town, and it's right along this track where it does a lot of industrial shipping. These are some of the radical flat buildings, by the way, in the background here. This one, this one, this one, they're all the Radical Flats um, buildings. Uh, again, you saw Bartlett Barrel earlier. Um, this is a little earlier picture. I now have a 
a nice sign on it with a little supports brackets and things. The loading dock down here, this was all scratch built. And then of course the barrels waiting to be picked up and the guy taking a break. And the loading dock awning will go into the new building once it's built. But this is just a design preservation models, Lobby's linen mill that was photocopied and basically followed the process of doing the foam core buildings. Another view of Bartlett in Cloverdale. You can see this is the Radical Flats building that I showed you earlier. And then Bartlett Barrel here in the little triangular spot in Cloverdale. This is Lundman Seafood Company. And this is a Magnuson Models uh, burnout fireproof warehouse that I basically took the two side walls and made put, put them side by side with two of the end walls. Well, one of the end walls just cut in half and and move to either end of this side that sticks out. The loading doors can be here or they have a loading dock here for seafood. Port Farley was named after my mother's side of the family. It was interesting, my great-grandfather was a Coast Guard captain on the Oregon coast. He rescued all the people off the Peter Iredale there at Fort Stevens. My parents or my mom knew that he had come over from Sweden on a sailing ship at age 13 by himself. So they went to Sweden to try and find the family history and they went to the city clerk in the city that he was born in and the, the guy there looked at him and said, there's nobody named Farley in Sweden. So anyway, they found the, the father, the mother and the brothers, their last name was actually Lundman, not Farley. Anyway, that's where Lundman seafood comes from. Sorry, that was, a, I, I digress, but it was a good story. This is what Lundman Seafood looks like in Port Farley again. It receives seafood, ships it out. It'll be a great building once it's built. I'm not totally set on it, but it's not too bad. So this is Cloverdale Freight. You can see that I've put a scratch built dock again with dock supports and the roof. If you look at it from the end, not too bad. And yes, that is a foam core mock-up. It's hard to tell. So I want to wrap it up and say thank you and see if there's any questions. What adhesives are you using? Mainly I'm using spray adhesive to attach the photocopies to the foam core. And then I'm using goo or contact cement to glue the edges of the foam core to uh, each other. And the, the, the goo works pretty well. How long does it take you to build one of those? Day and a half. The reason I'm doing that is because I, I have so many other projects, you know, with scenery and operations and everything else. I didn't want to spend a lot of time building these buildings because I want to build them right. So I thought this was a nice compromise and it actually gave me something to look at for a while and say, you know, that just doesn't look right or wow, okay, that's great. I'll build it. Can you talk about whether you do any bracing inside your foam core or how you do the corners? Okay, so the corners burr on one piece of a corner, I will cut out a quarter inch chunk of the foam core. So all that I'm left with is this little strip of paper. And then I'll glue the butt end of the other wall and glue it into that little piece of leftover paper on the edge. You end up with a nice seam. It may have a little white showing the edge of the paper, but that's easily disguised with, with either paint or a marker. And what glue do you do for the corner? I use goo. And goo doesn't attack the foam core? I haven't seen it do so, Burr. I've had pretty good luck. Most of those things are still together at this point. <laughs> Hey, Greg, this is Greg from Olympia. I do the same thing and I'm able to do it with a white glue. It, it sounds like it holds just as well. I've got stuff that's been sure. around for a long time. Sure, absolutely. It's really a matter of preference. I just had goo, so that's what I used. And it was fairly quick to put everything together. I I've mean, used I, a tacky, piece of chalk also. Tacky Greg, glue would probably be fine too. Greg, this is Chuck in Olympia also. Now, you know, the new layout we're building cost effective. So we're going to be using not as mock-ups, but we're going to use foam core buildings. And I've ordered some tools from Logan. One of them is a rabbit and you can make rabbit joints. And the other one is a V-cut tool 
that makes V cuts so that you can make a 45 on each side at the same time and leave the paper and fold it so that it comes together. Another thing is instead of glue, you can use eighth inch double-sided tape for that. Mm. And that sticks with a foam core and you can put it together. If anybody hasn't seen Chuck's old layout, he did a wonderful job with paper backdrops. Yes. Especially and in especially in South his South Seattle switching area. Well, not only the South Seattle, but the people thought the, the planing mill and the and the lumber kiln were were they were made out of foam core. Yeah. <laughs> and and a, a wonderful job too. And 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 I'm gonna say one more thing. The dollar store sells foam core for a dollar a sheet, and you can get black foam core there. So you yep. don't. So that will hide your lights just by using the black foam core at a dollar a sheet. It's a heck of a lot better than than going to uh, Michaels or someplace. Absolutely. I'll do you one better. Um, I brought home a pile of foam core from a frame shop. They were glad to see it going to a, a good home. So get your frame shops up for what they otherwise would be throwing in the garbage. There you go. A lot of you probably are the same as I ha I am and you have a, a closet full of building kits you haven't put together yet. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity to, to, to get them started and take a look and see what fits and see what doesn't. What do you do to fix those boo-boos in your roof on this picture? Um, I'll probably redo the roof. I've learned some new techniques since I built this. And you take black construction paper, paint it gray, cut it into 3 8 inch strips, and then you sand one edge of it and then you glue it down. I probably did not glue this down uh, with the correct type of cement. I've learned to use spray adhesive to glue it down instead of white glue. The actual roof with this new technique looks way better than this one does. So I'll probably replace this when I actually build the final product. You can also do what the real ones do, put a patch on it. Yep. That's true. One of the things I found with spray adhesives was, especially if you're using paper products, is that eventually they'll start coming loose, especially if they get any direct sunlight or anything. So you gotta go watch that. Haven't had too much issue yet, but it's a, certainly something to keep an eye on. Uh, someone mentioned the uh, black foam core from the dollar store. Yep. I, I found that that stuff fades rather severely. It like gets in uh, the sunlight or uh, black under fluorescent light. That so it fades quite a bit. These buildings really aren't meant to be permanent. They're really placeholders or visual clues as to whether they'll work there or not, or if they need to be changed, shortened, widened, etc. <clears throat> well, the buildings that I built that were foam core, uh, the frame. The planing mill and the lumber kills, they were 15 years old when I saw yep. the layout. So the 3M77 worked really well on that. I was going to show you this tool, if you can see it. This is a, a Logan Graphics Rabbit Cutter. And there, all the, there's, if you go, it's Logan, L-O-G-A-N, Graphics. And they have a whole lot of tools, uh, including a, a ruler that is just... 32 inches long, so it's longer than the uh, foam core. And so you can use that as a, and it has a cutter that also fits in a track that slides perfect, perfect cut to make a single cuts. You can also see the YouTube on foam board, really helpful to, to see that. Uh, there are a number of tools. The, the, the V cutter cuts a, a, a perfect V like this, 45 degrees. And it doesn't, and you, it doesn't go through the board. It just leaves, it just goes down to the paper and it's adjustable, has a dial. So you can use it on half inch or, or three sixteenths inch foam core. This only works on the, the thin three sixteenths inch that you get at the uh, Michaels or, or dollar store or whatever. But the, but the other cutters, they, they have an adjustable dial that you can use for thicker, foam board if you if you any of you build with that other tip I was going to make is if you use the board from the dollar store the it's called ready board a ready foam so I forget which it, its first word is ready uh, the glue is not as good on that and 
Uh, so my suggestion is you reinforce it with another thickness or with balsa sticks or, or, or basswood uh, frame on the back of it. Mm -hmm. I also use model builder software to print out my own boards. That's what I did for much of the scenery that you saw in South Seattle and also for the planing mill and the lumber kill. I use model builder software for Evans Design. They have all series. They have the window, they have a series of windows, signs, and so they have several pieces of software. The one that does the siding and the you can do metal siding or wooden siding of several different kinds and roofs. We use a lot of clever models, paper shingles on my models, on a lot of the model, but and people thought they were cedar. Foam core is so forgiving. I've you've cut buildings down. What I found in scratch building is quite often I make it make it and then make it bigger. And yeah. you can have foam car. You You're the wrong scale, Greg. And make things taller, make things shorter to see if you like it um, much easier than you can draw it up or visualize it. And then yeah. you can write all over it as you're going. So I've got pieces of foam core that became buildings that have all the construction notes written right on the white foam core. Yep. Well, you can't do that with a black foam core. <laughs> Let me tell you one more tip with that uh, dollar store foam core. The uh, black paper will peel off pretty easy. And a piece of rolled up of aluminum foil with a, you know, so that it's really rough, roll that over the texture of the, after you peel it off, you can get good stucco texture that way. If you want to make a stucco building, and that's what we're going to have mostly on, on our layout. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, I hope you enjoyed this clinic and you can also see recordings of other uh, clinics that we, that have been presented in other months. So Thanks again and hope to see you again. Bye-bye.